Hey guys, so today we're going to do a little bit of a vacuum line job. Not complete, uh, so let's call it part one. Um, we've been doing a bit of work with um, water pump and uh, thermostat and harmonic balancer and alternator pulley and changing the belts. Uh, we'll pull the boost pipe. Um, uh, as you can see, this is all open. But we don't have intake manifold gaskets today so we don't want to pull that off so today what are we going to do we're not going to touch any vacuum line under the manifold any from the distribution box where it feeds from the main vacuum line into the vacuum line system uh, this is x5 it's stock has a dpf well it's semi-stock let's call it this way it has the low pressure egr high pressure EGR. So basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a turbo control side of vacuum lines, but we're not going to do the low pressure EGR and uh, motor mounts uh, side. And probably anything under the car we're not gonna do today. We're gonna cover it in part two. So no motor mount. As you can see, the EGR cooler has been removed. So there is the electric um, switch over valve for the EGR cooler. It feeds off one of the lines. So what are we going to do? We're probably gonna cut it somewhere here and then we'll splice it um, and then when we do part two we'll take from this splice and then we'll we'll do the other side splice not gonna make any difference um, but uh, it gives us a chance to sort of show you show you this side and as I said this car is stock uh, with the DPF still on so it has a differential pressure sensor it's a complicated part to remove uh, because the sensor is still on the on the plastic bracket but hopefully we'll go through that and uh, maybe show you a few things just cutting the lines right now and then we'll cut here this is a low pressure EGR so we're not gonna touch it at this point um, as I said this is semi stock car so maybe we will cap it let me, just, let me just cut it here first. Oh my god, this is so dirty. Oh, it's nastiness. And then I'll probably just pull it out here. And maybe cut it here somewhere. Oh. So we just capped off this low pressure EGR feed line from the pressure converter. Still doesn't eliminate potential leak at the pressure converter, but but at least uh, it cuts it there and then we'll replace it when we do part two. Make these a little bit more straight all at the same time. And then we'll put the splicers in there. So, just using these splicers. These lines are extremely dirty. It's horrible. So it'd be nice to get them all changed. I'm gonna undo this little sleeve and just go from the middle with a screwdriver and then undo these these buttons so this way you don't damage it like that and then you can just pull it up or this way probably easier so what we're going to do we're gonna cut more lines so we cut lines here these are the two feed lines from the from the central vacuum point and then uh, one of them is coming to the accumulator box so to say so we're gonna cut it here and that frees up some space the second line is going to the input of the wastegate pressure converter so we're gonna cut it there uh, maybe first we're going to put it pull it so you got to be careful here because everything is plastic and brittle and and kind of and of awkward. So I'm just gonna pull it out this way. Got more space, and then I'm going to cut it here, just before the nipple. There. Okay. This line we don't need to cut because it's part of this. This is an output from the accumulator box. So this is part of this whole assembly. So you can leave it. So this long red one is connected here to the compressor bypass like that okay so I'm gonna disconnect it there don't pull on this this one was easy to remove but usually you would cut it along the nipple and then kind of we'll show later 
And so this is the longest one. And we're gonna free it up. It is kind of it goes on the bottom and goes in between. And we're gonna pull it out. And we're probably gonna cut it here. It's a pressure converter output, but it's a feed to the wastegate actuator. It actually has a splice, factory splice, somewhere down the middle here, there. So this is where we're gonna disconnect it. It's all factory, everything is factory in this car, even this clip. Everything usually gets brittle and gets broken on most cars, but this one has everything factory. So there's the splice here, okay? So we're going to cut it. Well, let's just cut it in the middle first. I'm gonna cut it after there. And then here, it's at the pressure converter output. And we're going to pull this out and cut it here just to give us space. So now, remove this. Here's the fun part. Next we're going to work on electrical connectors. We've already covered it in our valve cover gasket video, but we'll repeat it here just uh, probably in a brief form, but um, the other video will show a little bit more detail if you wish. What we're going to do, this is the exhaust pressure sensor. So because we didn't want to take it off the, um, the banjo bolt off the manifold here, for whatever reason it was too, uh, too tough and we didn't want to mess with it. So we're going to just take it off the bracket. There's three bolts, one, two, and then a third one down below. So but before, we're just gonna disconnect the electric. This one is stuck for whatever reason. There we go. Sometimes you have to pry them a little bit, but careful. Now we can do the three bolts. I like to start from the bottom one. So when we pull the bracket, we'll carefully move this to the side, not to touch on the pressure hose, and then we'll uh, pull it out. There. Just remove that bracket, pop some of these hoses. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, this one looks like uh, it just popped out. That's okay, that's good. We need that. But, so usually what happens is these clips, they break. So the easiest not to break them and to free up the wiring loom is to cut carefully, cut at the zip tie. I tried to so this one popped out already, but this one we will, oh look there's mosquitoes growing there. Got so much water, it's got mosquitoes growing in there. Um, Pull the zip tie out, and then it's free, okay? And then we'll do the same with the rest of them, whatever is left here. Okay, so now we'll remove these two exhaust sensor connectors. We're not gonna disconnect them yet, but the way to do it is there is this little lever here. So you take a small screwdriver and pull it down. So it's actually interesting, these connect connectors are different. On the older models, they're much simpler on the, this is a 2012, so 2012 they did with the interlock. Usually they don't come with interlock. But to do that, you just take a pick, go under the tongue, and uh, needs a bit of leverage. There's a little, a little, come on, there and then you can just separate them like that. The second one, this one you can probably move out of the way. There's the clips and then we can unclip the O2. And so these are the two. I just want to see how they're routed so I remember. And this one, oh yeah, all right. So these ones are routed in there. So you can just lay this one. Now the second one, it's interesting because, well, actually, since we disconnected this, we can do the same here. There, and like that. Now, this one is, 
a little bit tighter. So let's pull it outside here like that. And same thing. Oh no, this one doesn't have a lock. That's interesting. The heck? Huh. This one's the older design, so it's easier. Okay. Alright, so that's that. like that okay so two we'll disconnect that in a second right so we got O2 this is a weird bracket oh, it's broken off isn't it? isn't it broken off it looks like it's broken off yeah this bracket is broken off the factory it's weird it used to be it used to be a loop here for the bolt so the third EGT sensor is here and we'll remove it the same way for EGT sensor connection. So this is actually a second one on the DPF. Sometimes they get dry and stuck here. There. So there. Yeah, so that new connection design is only for the you know for the um for the low pressure EGR temperature sensor. The big one is the O2 sensor connection. Now, it's clipped to the bracket, and what we're going to do, I showed it before, there's two clips. What you do is, you have to, like they're kind of like claws, right? So you have to undo it from one side, and then you gotta undo it from another side, carefully, not to break, and then it will slide out, hopefully. And kind of go by feel almost. And that, there. And that, once it unclips, it slides out nicely. So, I like to do the firewall side first, clip, and then the, and then the, the one on the front. And then what you do after is you can unclip, unclip it completely from the connector. So a little bit probably stuck. This thing hasn't been taken apart at all. There. So, no point pulling. So like that. Now, what happens then is that these are the harness connection side and this is the actual sensor side. So we're gonna move the sensor side Two more connections. One go to the electric switch over valve for compressor bypass, it's this one. And then another one goes to the DPF differential pressure sensor. That's this one. So we're gonna do the, the compressor bypass first. The connection is the same as here. You just press on the, on the spring and release. And it's connected this way. So it's facing the firewall and a connector is facing the passenger side or the, the spring right so you go press and disconnect like that that connects like this okay so that's that instead of unclipping the electrical connector from the differential pressure sensor we're going to just undo differential pressure sensor from this bracket it's held by a small torx i think it's t20 and uh, on X5, there's actually enough room to put a little ratchet on there with the, with, the, with the bit. But on 335, good luck. You almost have to, there's very little space. So you have to probably use vice grips and put the, put the bit in there and just go bit by bit. So we'll try that. Visually, it's hard to see, but it's right on the end of the bracket here. So this is where the bolt is. And uh, actually, it turned out that it's a... Uh, it's a Phillips on here of unknown provenance. So it's uh, probably somebody's been messing with it already and didn't put the proper uh, proper screw in. In order to put pull this whole bracket, it's also this line. It comes from a T here. From the output, it tees off one on a pressure converter for turbo switch over on the back here. And this one goes to that compressor bypass electric valve. Now, that's on a separate bracket. We're going to cut this vacuum line here. 
okay so this is from this tea if it's done properly so that won't hold us and this big can turbo switch over actuator vacuum actuator we're gonna cut this line the easiest way to do it is basically it's it's an output from this pressure converter here if I yank on it you can see it's here so you can either do it here or if you want more more uh, kind of vision you can just do it here just don't do electrical instead so kind of like that and then you can pull it out from so it's on the nipple here on the on the on this big can and you can pull it out of the way now a couple more things there's this one and there's this one and then it's also on the bracket here it's these guys on the pressure converters oh man too many vacuum lines in the way so I use a pick tool there like that. and then the second one is here also too many vacuum lines in the way maybe I should have cut them all up but like that okay so these can go to the back here all right so now we are ready to unscrew the bracket. The bolt is here. It's kind of the or the, the orientation is this shaft here. So it's there's a plate. So it's above the plate, right? So if you go like this, and you can probably most people don't put this one back on just because it's such a difficult thing to put back in after this one we usually put back on good is moving this electrical a little bit out there we go we want to extract the compressor bypass switch over valve and for that we need a screwdriver so it's clipped onto this onto this board and then there's a clip and then it goes like that actually this one was easy so this one is the turbo switch over vacuum actuator it has the hose and it comes from pressure converter here in a bracket and in order to remove this same thing don't pull on this because it's metal nipple but they do break so and if they do break you have to replace the whole actuator or you can epoxy it some kind of nipple on it but the new one if you have to buy it's expensive it's about 200 something dollars so just gently cut cut along you know and then eventually it will separate the factory ones are seated quite deep so you can't see it but so you can sometimes go in this way to and cut it that way. And there we go. Like that. 